Yeah, you're with DXB today. Really appreciate your company. Thanks so much indeed. Hope you're enjoying the show as well. So we try and open a little bit of a door, if you like, onto the art scene right here in the UAE. Um, arts and culture scene, to be precise. And listen, you can't have a conversation about art without introducing our next guest. Theirs is a family name that is synonymous with the art scene here and has been for several genera generations. An absolute pleasure uh, to welcome art consultant to the stars. Neil Shukla to the show. Neil, great to see you as always. Same models. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah. Are we still allowed to say Happy New Year? We yeah, can still say Happy New Year. Happy New Year. All the way through. Always Happy New Year. Listen, again, I go back to that point of like, who better to have in this conversation? Who better to have to quantify how far the arts scene has come here in Dubai in what the last 20 years or so? It's changed fundamentally, hasn't it? Oh, amazing. It's, uh, I mean, I've been more with the art for the last 35 years. That's why LinkedIn said today, 35 years at Four Seasons Ramesh Gallery. <laughs> so that's my official t uh, number of years. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. And my parents started the first art gallery in the UAE before the UAE was formed 50 years ago. Mm. The first license was issued to them. So it's been a long journey for my parents and for myself. So point, put your finger on, on why we've seen, so, and, and you know, we've seen art scenes develop around the world. And unless we forget, there has been an art scene here since time immemorial, etc. Mm. But how, how has it become What's happened to sort of push it forward at the moment? Is it the galleries? Is it the investment? Is it the curators? Is it uh, the government's sort of support of the, in, of, of the industry and the, the, the landscape? Well, culturally, of course, uh, you know, the leadership has supported tremendously the art scene in, uh, from mm. the, this part. But real estate has that just gravitated tremendously. A lot of super wealthy people from around the world are making Dubai home and they bring the arts collections here and also purchasing art from this part of the world from local artists and galleries. And I've seen a lot of that through my picture framing business, Dubai Picture Framing. So I frame a lot of high-end paintings, mm -hmm. photographs for such collectors and galleries. And I see a movement, a shift towards truly fine art photography and painting in the last five years. It's just, I just said tripled. Mm. So what would you say, have you seen an influx as well with the, uh, the big fashion brands and fashion houses uh, when it comes to properties as well? Um, because a lot of people are buying properties, but now a lot of these fashion brands, hotels, Versace in, in, in name in one, uh, they've all come together with property. How, how have you found that? Uh, well, because, you know, I do hotels. Uh, that's my bread and butter day to day. <laughs> and, I, and I create uh, you know, stories and... Uh, art stories for hotels more than crafting and I make paintings, photographs, sculptures, lighting installations. So Versace is one of my projects, by the way. Uh, so Versace W, uh, Grosvenor House, Royal Atlantis. So, we, you know, I create the entire story behind the hotel, what, what a consumer, a visitor would see when they enter the door to the time they leave. So from that point on, we craft, we create those elements in, in different aspects. So fashion houses are getting into it big time and they really want to penetrate that segment of the market, which has become a big part of the business because not only they want to sell clothing, apparel, but they want to make sure that they are now part of the furniture and art part of the brand. It's very important for them. Mm. So you mentioned earlier that you have a framing business. So how important is framing your artwork? Tom's now going to be a wonderful model for us here. So how important is it to beautifully frame your artwork. Well, if you see this one here, you see two uh, sunflowers. One is framed in plain glass yep. and one in the UV glass, museum glass. The one, the UV glass, clutch the reflection complete 90%, 99% actually. And if you have an expensive work of art, it doesn't have to be millions of dollars. It could be, you know, a couple of thousand of dollars or dirhams. But if you don't protect it, if you don't mm -hmm. glaze it, all the time, the UV factor in the UA is so strong, it will make the artwork yellow and mm -hmm. diminish the value of your works, which yeah. is very, very important. So I started Dubai Picture Framing for my father's works. My father's photography is one of the most prominent, important in the history of the UAE. So photograph, to frame his works, I started that business, and glazing is the most important aspect of framing, which you see right here. Yeah, so I can definitely vouch for that because I've had some artwork on my wall and obviously I always try to keep the curtains like closed as much as yeah. possible, but they, sunlight has bleached basically some of the artwork. It's incredible, so very worth knowing. I'm going <laughs> to ask you a slightly lighter question. Tell me. I want to know a little bit more about the Pasha Peach, uh, the Pasha Cherries. So at the moment, uh, we're involved with uh, eight different projects, hotel projects, uh, a couple in Dubai, in the UAE. 
and five, the new five hotel, as you guys know, is opening in JBR. Mm -hmm. And the five brand has uh, purchased Pasha Global. So now Pasha is owned by five. And so one of the individuals who I'm working with is Kabir Machandani. Kabir, thank you <laughs> for giving the project. And one of the iconic pieces is going to be this massive all steel 316 Pasha Cherry in the middle of the five Pasha Club. Wow. 140,000 all welded pieces by hand are going to be crafting, creating these incredible cherries in the in the. Are the you space. welding them by hand? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm not, you are? I mean, I, it'll be all, I, mean, I have a, a team of 80 people. Okay. So it's a whole, uh, I mean, amazing team. Thank, team, thank you. You should do a couple yourself though, just to say I I, 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 I do that. It. <laughs> Don't you see my social media? Yeah. I'm there. No, it's a, uh, no, it, it's a, it's a, it's an effort that we put together. So I bring the skill set, the technique, the processes, how to make such things. And my team and I, we work together and we cast and craft these works of uh, art. We've just, we, we've talked a lot throughout the show, Neil, about, you know, how far we've come in terms of the art scene here, etc. And thanks to the efforts of Gilda and all those other guests that we've spoken about as well. I mean, let's just look ahead to the mm. future as well. I mean, what is the potential of art investments, the art scene here at the moment? And at the same time, do you have to be careful not to grow too fast, too quick as well? Uh, remember, art can come in very small packages, but it can be worth hundreds of millions of dollars. The Picasso, which just came last uh, two months ago, mm. was showcased at Sotheby's, is now selling $140 million. So it's easily transported without difficulty. And it is difficult to but it's very small if you think about it. And art itself has paid highest dividend over the years, we discussed it earlier, mm -hmm. than real estate or you know stocks, anything. Yeah. So I think the scene will blossom It'll continue going forward. I was in Art Basel in Miami just uh, in December, but compared to Art Dubai, it's way off. So Dubai, the UAE, has, still has a long way to go mm. to come up to that level mm. because that's a really an incredible scene and we still have to catch up on that. So the grassroots are there, the, the appetite is there, and I think more than more important, the will is there to, to grow. Mm. Now, um, your father obviously took, done an amazing thing throughout the years um, with his photography. Is it possible to buy any of those pieces? <laughs> <laughs> well, we try to installate the entire work, so we work with Dubai culture a lot. So my father's museum, Itihad Museum. If you've never been to, please, I request all of you watching, go see that, visit that. And with Dubai culture's uh, drive to bring culture history back to life, we work with them to showcase my father's works in the museums. We work with individuals who are passionate about his photography mm. and we sell to the right individuals. So it's not online, it's, we, don't, we don't do that. We're very protected about his work and keeping ethnicity, the beauty alive and keeping history unique. Incredible. Mm. Neil, thank you so much. We could talk to you for ages, man. Okay. But, um, but I'll, I'll gift you one work. How's that? Oh, Matt, it's on air as well. Yeah, thank you, yeah. brother. <laughs> I love you, Matt. I love you. So when you watch on TV, it's true. Done. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you at the Passion Launch as well. Done, do you? <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, well, Amy, so far, I believe it? it's that time, isn't it? It uh, is indeed. The experience 60 seconds. It is. So, oh, Gilda, God. you've been sat with us all Put evening. Spot, and yeah. we'd like to get to know you <laughs> a little bit better. <laughs> So we're going to put 60 seconds on the clock and oh I've got God. some quick fire questions for you. You okay. ready? Go for it. Okay, in three, two, one. If you weren't in arts and culture, what industry would you be in? Food. Okay, good one. <laughs> one thing that you cannot live without? Oh, my phone? Same here. Sorry. Your motto <laughs> in life and work? Mm, I don't have one. You don't have one? No, it takes a village. Take a I think yeah, is the only does. thing I uh, <laughs> say on repeat. Save always. Yeah. <laughs> Your hidden gem in Dubai. Um, I don't know if it's hidden, but one of my favorites that I think I take people to is uh, Oshtadi kebab down in uh, in Burr, Dubai. Okay, yeah, great choice. If you could choose one superpower, what would it be? Ooh, invisibility. Yeah, me too. <laughs> a book you're reading at the moment? I am not reading a book at the moment. Top series that you've watched recently? <sighs> Oh, I hate Susie. Okay. <laughs> Top podcast recommendation? Um, I'm not, I can't remember what it's called, but there's a new one by Nader Nethi, who um, is a kind of food activist and, and blogger. Okay. Last question, this time's just gone, but why Dubai? Why Dubai? 
Um, I don't know. It was a, it was a bit of a, a fluke. I wasn't expecting to move here. I came on holiday and handed my resignation in a month later. Fantastic. 16 years, yeah. H happened to us all. Yeah. <laughs> That's how we all got here. <laughs> Well, thank you, Gilda, so much. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. thank you. Gilda, thanks for guest co-hosting for us today. All the best it was a pleasure. with the Arcos Festival. Thank you weekend. so much. Right? 27th, 28th, 8.30 to 11.30. Tickets? See you down there. Yes, absolutely. Online on Platinum List. 126 dirhams for two-day pass. Um, under 18s and over 60s go free. Try book in advance to avoid the queues. Really appreciate you coming yeah, in. Thanks course. and all the best. Thank you with so much for the having fest me. This weekend. Will you be down at the fest? Of course, we're coming for the food, right? Yeah, of you course. You and I. <laughs> we're, we're we'll take you on a food tour. <laughs> we're coming. We'll take you on the food tour. Right, big thanks to you, Neil, as well, for joining <laughs> us. Okie dokie. Uh, there is still plenty still to come from our artists in residence here. We've also got an artist in residence down at Al Sakal at the moment. In fact, uh, we sent you here down to uh, check out uh, tonight's uh, recording artist, a very talented artist as well. Bia Kadri will be playing us out, but we'll find out a little bit more about Bia in just a few moments' time. I'm Bea Kadri, Lebanese singer-songwriter, and I'll be performing my song Pillow Talk today. It's an original track. I've been releasing music, original music since 2018, and I write my own songs. They come from, you know, a true place. Uh, I stay up late at night and, you know, something comes up or I'm feeling something that I need to express, and that's basically how um, I make my music. I either reach out to a friend that I know in music who's a producer or a musician or whatever it is, and then we start you know, building the song that you hear. Um, you can check out all my music on all, you know, streaming platforms, YouTube, Spotify, and Rami, Apple Music, whatever it is you stream on. And I'm on all the socials. If you want to catch me live, I sing uh, pop and R&B, English and Arabic. Lately, I've been writing a little bit more Arabic, trying to push myself out of my comfort zone. Um, I grew up listening to English, and that's why I think I'm more comfortable writing in English. Um, but, you know, I'm also Lebanese. I spoke Arabic my entire life, so it's also natural that I write in Arabic, so I've been trying to do that more. And um, thanks for tuning in.